Welcome to the Bible Show. I'm your host, Jeff Hudson. This is the Bible Show where we read the scripture directly from the Bible. Not what your pastor said, not what you heard, not what the common beliefs are, but what does the Bible actually say? Today's lesson, the terror of the Lord, the terror of the Lord. You don't hear that too much, do you? You don't hear about the terror of the Lord. You know, I used to go to church on Sundays and uh, I can't recall, I, I can't think of any time where the pastor or even anyone in the congregation ever mentioned about the Lord being terrible, the terror of the Lord. Are you supposed to fear God? Never heard that. I can't remember hearing it anyway. You know, there's always, it's always um, uh, God loves you. Jesus is love. He won't do anything. He's going to save everybody. If you just be a good, nice person, pay your tithes. No, there's a terrible Lord. He's, he's going to come back and kill everybody. They never, I've never, I don't recall a sermon going to church on Sunday where they mentioned about the book of Revelation and Jesus coming back and killing everybody. They, that wasn't, that wasn't um, a servant of God. So we've got to get into this one, the terror of the Lord, because um, this is a, what the Bible actually says. You know, there's a lot of that belief that's out there, that fluffy belief, you know, the spiritual stuff. No, actually, just read the book for itself and take it for what it says. You know, don't try to whitewash nothing and, and change what the definitions of stuff are. No, fear is fear. It's not, you can't change fear to love. Not in the Bible. No, fear is fear God because he's killed people. Killed the whole world, drowned the whole world, right? Go back to Noah. The whole world was flooded except eight people in the whole world. And you're going to say, well, uh, well, how many people were really in the world at that time? Well, they were living, what, 900 years. So how many babies can you have in 900 years? Anyway, let's get into the lesson, the terror of the Lord. We're going to start this out in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and we're going to pick it up at verse 9. The terror of the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he have done, whether it be good or bad. Now this first verse here, uh, uh, verse 9, wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, that means if, if you're... Um, if you're still alive when Jesus comes, or if you die, then you get resurrected when he comes. Whether we're present or absent, any way it goes, you're going to get judged. Verse 10, for we, must, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he have done, whether it be good or bad. Verse 11, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. See, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. Now, this is Second Corinthians. This is in the New Testament. Has have you been to a Sunday congregation where they read this scripture? Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. Just think about it. Did they ever read this? It's in the Bible. Do they even read the Bible at all? Do the, does the pastor walk up there with the Bible in his hand and open it up and read out of it? Or does he just carry it around? Or does he have a Bible at all? Do people go to church with Bibles? Or do they just walk in there? You know? So what are you learning? Are you giving an emotional concert with the choir? Let's go to... Uh, I went to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary just to look up the word manifest. It means obvious, but I want to read the definition of manifest because it says here in 11, but we are made manifest unto God. That means we want to be, we want, we want it to be obvious to even God that we're trying to we strive and to be obedient to his word and get into his kingdom. And it also says, verse 11, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciousness. So we want to be, we want to, we want to be. We want it to be obvious that we're striving to be following the obedient to the word of God and striving to get into His kingdom to all mankind. 
When someone sees you, they should say, okay, this person's trying to walk, walk righteously. Is that what they see? Well, maybe they will, when they first see you, they might not see you. But when you start talking to them, what do they hear? What is their interpretation of you? What's their impression of you? Is it obvious to them that, oh, this guy is like a righteous, try to be a righteous person, upright citizen, follower of Christ? Is that obvious to people? Merriam-Webster Dictionary manifests, readily perceived by the senses and especially by the sense of sight, easily understood or recognized by the mind. Easily understood. Obvious. So it's obvious. Manifest. Let's keep going. Isaiah chapter 45. Isaiah 45. We're going to read verses 5 through 7. Isaiah chapter 45. Verse five, I am the Lord and there is none else. There is no God beside me. Now people take this scripture and say, see, there's only one God. No, this is Jesus talking and he's the only God that man has ever known. I got some scriptures. I was gonna break this up into like two segments, but I don't know if I'm gonna have time to do the, sec the second segment. Because um, you know, my my, um, my reason behind the breaking it up into segments is because uh, I've heard people say, well, that Old Testament, you know, that was the old evil father. You know, you know that's the Old Testament. The New Testament, we got Jesus. He's love. Right. Well, actually, that God in the Old Testament is Jesus. So I want to I might read a couple of scriptures, maybe not all the ones that I have written down here. But I want to make it known that the God of the Old Testament, that evil God that was killing everybody. Was Jesus. That's the only God that man has ever known. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 5, I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, thou, I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. Verse 6, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. Now, there's really a God here. There's the Father, and there's the Son. But no man has, has heard the, the voice of the Father at any time or seen his shame. Verse 7, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. And what does the Lord say right here? Verse 7, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. The Lord creates evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Do they ever read the scripture? In the church that you go to, are they teaching you to fear the Lord, to be obedient to what the scripture says? Or they just say, ah, oh, that stuff's all done away, but you ain't got to worry about it. Pay some tithes, come to church on Sunday, you good. Keep living the same lifestyle you've been living. Do they even teach about repentance? Amos chapter 3. The book of Amos. Chapter 3, we're going to read one verse, verse 6. And it's chapter 3, verse 6. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city, and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in a city, and the Lord have not done it? We just read in Isaiah that the Lord creates evil. So now we're hearing that. Can there be evil in a city? All the stuff that's going on in the city, this evil that's running rampant in the city, and the Lord have not done it, or at least allowed it. That's what the Bible says. You know, man's got a choice. You know, you can do, you can try to live righteously, or you don't. You can be obedient to the word, or you don't have to. You can go out here and create all kinds of mayhem and wickedness. There's a judgment at the end. And you're going to wind up in the kingdom of heaven or the lake of fire, one or the other, based on your works while we're here in the flesh on this earth. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. We're going to pick it up at verse 26. It's the Old Testament and the New Testament. Hebrews is in the New Testament. I think I mentioned that sometime before somebody said, uh, uh, was talking about the Bible, and the person was like, well, let's go to the book of Hebrews. And another person said, I don't read that, that, that Old Testament. 
Now the Hebrews is in the New Testament. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. So God, the, Jesus came and died for the sins of man. Now you got to accept that. And you got to walk righteously and stop, try to stop yourself from sinning. Repent from the sins. What is sin? The transgression of the law. So go back and read what the law says. And if you're do, not doing that, if you're going against that, you're committing sin. You're not just something that's made up on your own. You can't be your own judge and think what you're doing for your own if it's what God says you need to do to get into this kingdom. No, you have to do what he says to get into the kingdom. There's a requirement that the owner of the kingdom says you have to do to get in. It's like, no, you're not getting in unless you do this. Verse 20, 26 again. For if we sin willfully after that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. Who are the adversaries? Those that were disobedient to God. 28. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall be shall he be thought worthy who have trodden underfoot the Son of God and have counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and have done despite unto the spirit of grace. For we know him that hath said, vengeance belongeth unto me. Vengeance belongs to the Lord. I will recompense, say the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. If you're not doing this thing right and the judgment comes and you... Don't have any treasure set up in heaven. It's a fearful thing to get thrown into that lake of fire. It's going to be a fearful thing. If you've made up your own righteousness rules that you think are going to get you in, then worry about what the book said you needed to do. It's going to be a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. First Peter chapter four. First Peter chapter four. And we're going to read verses 17 and 18. First Peter chapter 4, verse 17. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. Now, where's judgment going to begin? At the house of God. People that go to church, call themselves going to church, religious folks, you know, all these Christians and Muslims and Jews and all the other religions. Buddhist, I don't know if that's really a religion. Well, is Buddhism a religion or just a, um, a, a, a tradition or a custom or philosophy? Hinduism, I think these are all like religions. So, yeah, anyway. Verse 17 again. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it, if it first began at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? What about those that don't even obey the gospel of God? There are people that go to church that don't obey the gospel of God. You go to church on the wrong day. You don't go to the church on this on the Sabbath day. You know? Is that something? Is it, is it enough to not get you into the kingdom? Well, it's God, Jesus is going to be the judge. We know the book says keep the Sabbath day. You know, worship God every day. Praise God every day. But the Sabbath day is one of the Ten Commandments. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The Sabbath day, not the, not the first day. Verse 18. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? If the righteous scarcely get in, the people that are trying to do this thing right are going to scarcely make it. Scarcely, like barely, barely get in. So what about those that that are doing it wrong or not even doing it at all. Where are they going to fall? If you get in. Psalms chapter 2. The book of Psalms chapter 2. We're going to read verses 1 through 4. Then we're going to do some skipping. Psalms chapter 2 verse 1. Why do the heathen rage? 
The heathen is just other nations, like the, the non-Israelites. Excuse me. Uh, Non-Israelite nation are is what's called heathen. It doesn't mean anything bad. It's just another nation. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine the vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. Against the Lord, that's one, and against his anointed, that's two. Let us break their beds asunder and cast away their cords from us, saying, well, let's, let's go back to verse two. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. <laughs> the Lord shall have them in derision. Let's get down to verse nine. Verse nine, thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye, king, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Be wise, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Fear the Lord. I can change that into love. Now you're supposed to love the Lord too. How do you love the Lord? By being obedient to his commandments. You read that in 1 John or 2 John. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. You're going to read one verse. Ecclesiastes. That might be my favorite book. Chapter 3. We're going to read verse 14. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 14. I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. And God, and God doeth it that men should fear before him. The terror of the Lord. Fear before God. Because he's got the power to throw you in this lake of fire. Not only will he kill you with physical death, It'll wake you up and it'll throw you in a lake of fire, which is the second death. And there's a lot of scriptures that point to that that might that, that might say dying. It's really pointing to the second death. You know, where you're alive, burning in a lake of fire for all eternity. Psalms, back to Psalms chapter 50. Psalms chapter 50. We're going to read verses 16 through 22. Psalms chapter 50, verse 16. But unto the wicked God saith, what hast thou to do to declare my statutes, or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? Seeing thou hatest instruction and castest my words behind thee. When thou, when thou sawest a thief, then thou consentest with them, and hast been partaker with adulterers. You're joining in with the fun. 19. Thou givest thy mouth to evil and thy tongue frame of deceit. Thou sittest and speakest against, against thy brother. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. As God saying, you know, you've done these things, I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such as one as thyself. You thought I was going around all the way with you. That's fine. So you're just playing around, right? But I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. 22. Now consider this, ye that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver. God said, you better repent and start being obedient to his word, or he's going to come back and tear you in pieces. Does that sound like... Like... Uh, you change fear to love. Now, let's keep going. Luke chapter 12. We're going to read two, two verses, verses four and five. Luke chapter 12, verse four. Now, you can that there's tons of scripture like this. Like we're going through them. These are like one and two hitters, right? It's giving you the whole idea is you got to fear God, though. There's tons of this. The whole Bible, all up and down the Bible. 
So how did this get done away with? Don't let now don't let man deceive you, man. Don't let any man deceive you about what you need to do to get into the kingdom of God. These laws are not done away with. If the laws are done away with, then what are the instructions you need to do? Who comes up with them? Man. So you're just going to take what, what God says. Nah, we don't need that. We're going to do this instead. And God's going to say, okay, that's cool. Then what's there a Bible for? Why is all this stuff even written? Luke chapter 12, verse 4. And I say unto you, my and I say unto you, my friends, this is Jesus talking. Be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. So they kill the body. So don't be afraid of that. Verse five. But I will forewarn you, forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him, which after he have killed, have power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. So you get killed physically, and then you get woken up out of this physical death, judged, and then killed again into the lake of fire forever. That's what you should fear. Because once you're dead, what? You don't know nothing, you don't feel nothing, it's over. That's it. Then you wake up, and there's a judgment. And that's where the fear really comes into play. So understand it now. While it's like you able-bodied, and it's, you can do something about it. Take hold of his word. Take heed to it. Try to be obedient to it. Start with trying to keep the Sabbath day. Start with not washing your car on Saturday. Just don't go, go buy and sell nothing on Saturday, the day we call Saturday. Start Friday evening. Friday evening to Saturday evening, go to a Sabbath day church. You know, don't do no work. Try Just try it that way. Tune in to some of these um, Sabbath day preachers at the House of Jacob, Israel of God, uh, Israel Church of Jesus, Israel Church of the Living God. Find them on YouTube. There's all kinds of lessons that teach this word. Uh, Revelation chapter 14. What, you're not supposed to read the book of Revelation? <laughs> Why is it in the Bible? Revelation chapter 14, we're going to read verses 6 and 7. Revelation chapter 14, verse 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, who dwells on the earth, all of us, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. You know, so that, 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 that throw, does away with that. This word is only meant for the Hebrew Israelites. Right here it says, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. That's everybody, right? Say it with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come. And worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. What does it say? Fear God and give glory to him. Fear God. The terror of the Lord. Luke chapter 13, Luke 13, going to read verses 23 through 28. You see me going back and forth, Old Testament, New Testament, it's all saying, fear God, be obedient to God. How many times does God have to say this to get it to sink in? Luke chapter 13, verse 23, and it says, then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? Are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Jesus replied, strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. When once the master of the house is risen up and have shut the door and ye begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us, and he shall answer and say unto you, I know not which ye are. 26. Then shall ye begin to say, we have eaten and drunk in thy presence, and thou hast taught in our streets. But he will say, I tell you, I know you not which ye are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. So you think you're doing this thing right? Are you? The Lord's going to say, I never knew you. You didn't do anything I told you to do. 28. 
There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourselves thrust out. Not gonna make it, try to do your own thing. Gotta follow what the instructions are. Do what the book says, not what you think. Psalms chapter 96, back to the book of Psalms. Psalms 96. And we're going to read um, two verses. Verses four and five. Psalms chapter 96, verse four. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. There's gods with a little g. There's only one God. Well, that's the Godhead, the Father and Jesus. Verse five. For all the gods of the nations are idols. Like I was saying, but the Lord made the heavens. So who do you fear? You fear the true and living God, not some idol that's made up, not some statue, not some cross, not some fish on the back of your car, not some idol, not some beads. Uh -uh. I think I did a lesson a couple of weeks ago about the symbols, religious symbols. I need none of that. The one, the one symbol that God did make, um, Hezekiah had to tear it up because he started worshiping the symbol. Okay, Proverbs chapter 2. Did we read Proverbs chapter 2 already? I think I read that, didn't I? That was Psalms chapter 2. Let's look and see. Yeah, I read Psalms chapter 2. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 2. We're going to read verses 1 through 6. Proverbs. Chapter 2, verse 1. Oops. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1. My son, if thou would receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding, yea, if thou criest after knowledge and lifteth up, liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. So how do you get this wisdom and knowledge and understanding of the Lord? You have to seek for it. Seekest for her if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord. Now, why are you going to understand the fear of the Lord? Because we're reading about all this stuff that God can do to you. He's got your eternal life in his hand, got your breath in his hand. Cut off the breath, that's it. You die, whatever state you're in, you get judged. Are you going to make it into the kingdom based on your works? Yeah, you got to fear this guy. It's not this fluffy baby Jesus no the true and living God that made everything let's go to the book of Zephaniah the book of Zephaniah Zephaniah is in the uh, in the Old Testament it's about the about the fourth the, the fourth book before the, the the last Old Testament so going backwards you got um you got uh Malachi, Zechariah, Haggai, Zephaniah. All right, going forward, you got, well, I'll start at Daniel. Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah. Zephaniah chapter 3, we're going to read verses 6 through 8. Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 6. I have cut off the nations. Their towers are desolate. I made their streets waste that none passeth by. Their cities are destroyed so that there is no man, that there is none inhabitant. I said, surely thou, wert, thou shalt, I said, surely thou wilt fear me, thou wilt receive instruction. So their dwelling should not be cut off howsoever. Wait, wait, let me go back. Verse seven. I said, surely thou wilt fear me, thou wilt receive instruction. So their dwelling should not be cut off. Howsoever, I punished them, but they rose early and corrupted all their doings. 
verse 8. Therefore, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them mine indignation. Even all my fierce anger for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. So the Lord's going to come back and devour the earth, devour the earth with fire. Why? Because no one's being obedient to God. We got our own idols all set up. We got our own righteous living and beliefs that we're going to do. No one's repenting from their wicked way. Just like go back to days of Noah. No, Noah's trying to tell everybody, you know, they're like, yeah, 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 whatever, dude. Same thing. Have we gotten there yet? I think we have. Joshua chapter 23. Book of Joshua chapter 23. Uh, we're going to read verses 14 through 16. Joshua chapter 23, verse 14. And behold, this day I'm going the way of all the earth. This is Joshua saying he's about to die. And yeah, you know in all your hearts and in all your souls that no one, that no one thing hath failed of all the good things which the Lord your God spake concerning you. This is Joshua talking to the Israelites after they um, got out of Egypt. Moses had died, so Joshua had taken over. Now he's old, he's about to die. So he's still talking to him, like, okay, remember, remember, well, well let's, let's let's go back. And behold, this day I'm going away, I'm going away of all the earth, and you know in all your hearts and all your souls that the God took care of them, that not one thing have failed of all the things, all the good things which the Lord your God spake concerning you. All are come to pass unto you, and not one thing have failed thereof. So everything God said he's gonna do for me did, if they were obedient to him. Now, was there some uh, some killings while they were there? Yeah. Go back and read the book of Exodus. And you'll see that the Lord got fed up with these Israelites. Anyway, verse 15. Therefore, it shall come to pass that as all good things are come upon you, <clears throat> which the Lord your God promised you, so shall the Lord bring upon you all evil things. Who's going to bring upon the Israelites evil things? The Lord. Why? Until he have destroyed you from off this good land which the Lord your God have given you. Now, why is he going to destroy him? When ye have transgressed the covenant of the Lord your God, that's why. You transgressed the covenant. What's the covenant? The commandments, the laws, the statutes. What's transgressed? You went against them. You didn't obey them. God gave this, this word to Israel. Israel's job was to pass it on to everybody else. This word is out there. You can go. Read this. Every, the, I think the Bible is like the number one selling book. Like every year, it's like the number one selling book. I think. Don't quote me on that, but I think I read that somewhere. Heard somewhere. How many people have Bibles? Is there a Bible in every house? At least in this this country, I don't know. Is there, is there a Bible in every house in in Saudi Arabia? <laughs> Verse sixteen. When ye have transgressed the covenant of the Lord your God, which He commanded you, and have gone and served other gods, that's why. And vow yourselves to them. Then shall the anger of the Lord be kindled against you. And ye shall perish quickly from off the good land which he have given unto you. And that's what happened to the Israelites. They were disobedient to God. This is a people that saw God and talked to God. And he, this was God's people. This is God's people. Gave them instructions directly out of his mouth on Mount Sinai. And they still just disobeyed it. These are people that saw the miracles of God. And they still fell off the wagon. I tell you, man, like this, it's easy to be deceived. It's, it's, it's easy to just go with what the world says and to look around and say, oh, that's okay to do that. Easy to fall into that. No, nah, you got to stand pat and just strive to be obedient to this book. You can't go back to do the wicked things of the world. It goes against what God says. It's the, it's the love of the world is enmity with God. But we think in this world, it's like, oh, just natural, it's fine, it's okay. Nah, but God hates that stuff. He's gonna, somebody's coming back to destroy the world for because no one's being able to what he says. It's like, nah, this is what you do. The people are like, nah, we're not doing that. We're going to do this. This is okay. We're going to make laws and say this is fine. Genesis 
chapter 38, Genesis 38, and we're going to read verses um, 6 through 10. Now, this is to show you that, that God is no respect of persons. It's, it's God that holds the breath of man. He can cut it off whenever he wants to. Genesis chapter 38, verse 6. And Judah took a wife for Ur, his firstborn. Now, now Judah, this is the, the patriarch Judah, the son of, of Jacob Judah, that Judah, you know, where the tribe actually started from. This, this is the first Judah. Well, not the first Judah, but you know, this is the, the Israelite Judah that the tribe of Judah comes after. Now, the the son, the fourth son of Jacob. Genesis 38, verse 6, and Judah took a wife for Ur, his firstborn. So Jesus came out of the tribe of Judah. Judah has a son, a son named Ur, whose name was Tamar. The woman's name was Tamar. So Ur was going to marry Tamar. Verse 7, and Ur, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord. Excuse me. Verse 7. And Ur, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord slew him. And who slew him? The Lord slew him. This is Jacob's grandson. And the Lord killed him. Verse 8. And Judah said unto Onan, and Onan is, is Judah's second son after Ur. And Judah said unto Onan, go in unto thy brother's wife and marry her and raise up seed to thy brother. Well, the tradition was or the custom was if a brother has a, if your brother has a wife and he dies before you have any children, the next brother is supposed to marry that wife and have a, 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 a child by her. So that to have, give seed to that brother that didn't have any kids. It's supposed to be dedicated to that, that brother. But what happened? What, what did Onan do? Verse nine. And Onan knew that the seed should not be his. And it came to pass when he went in unto his brother's wife that he spilled it on the ground. They pulled out, right? Lest that he should give seed to his brother. So it's like, nah, I'll sleep with him, but then I'm going to pull out and uh, I'm not going to impregnate her. Verse 10. And the thing which he did displeased the Lord, wherefore he slew him also. So now Onan got killed. Now who slew him? The Lord slew him. See, it just goes. To, I'm, um, I just want to make the point here that it's the Lord that's doing the slaying right here. You know, then someone didn't walk up to well, or well, maybe he used somebody. Um, who knows? It doesn't say how he died. He said he slew him. Maybe he had somebody else kill him, kill both of them, or maybe they just had a heart attack or something, died on the spot. In any case, it's the Lord that did it. That's what the book says. Fear the Lord. The name of the title. The terror of the Lord. That's what the name of the title is. All right, we got one more in this segment. Uh, Leviticus chapter 10. Here's another example of no respect of persons. Leviticus chapter 10. We're going to read verses 1 and 2. This is uh, Aaron's two sons. Now, we just read about Judah's two sons. Now, this was a um, uh, before uh, before Moses, is uh, Jacob's grandsons. So now we're going to Aaron's two sons. Aaron that walked around with Moses, right? That 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 helped lead the people out of out of Egypt. Leviticus chapter ten verse one, and Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered strange fire before the Lord which he commanded them not. God's like, look, let me offer you no strange fires to me. They did it anyway, right? Verse two. And there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. Now, who killed them? The Lord killed them. There's examples of like this. You, know, you can go read, just read the Bible. You'll see stuff like this where the Lord is doing the slaying. And keep in mind that it's the Lord that's doing the slaying here. You can't just do anything you want. They thought, they could worship God any kind of way. They thought they could use any kind of fire. Ah, it's fire. We can put it on there. No, it's not what the Lord said to do. So now you think that you can just make up what you want to do. It's going to be okay. Now, 
Aiden Nadab and Abihu were were two of the 74 people that actually saw God. They saw Jesus and ate and drank with him. You know, they were right there. And he still killed them, but he's not going to do anything to you. This is the same Jesus. That's the New Testament. They were going to think it's the, the fluffy, nice, soft baby Jesus that's the, the mommy want to keep. Uh-uh. This is the same Jesus of the God of the Old Testament. It's Jesus Christ. And we're going to read some scripture now. We're not going to go through all the ones I have here. I got like, I don't know, but another whole other lesson kind of. But I'll read a couple of them, and then we'll close it out, okay? So <clears throat> let's, let's go back to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and we've read this before. And you're going to read verses 1 through 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. Now, this is the part two segment to let you know that that God of the Old Testament that you need to fear is Jesus Christ in the New Testament. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse one. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Now, this is this is um, Paul, whose name was changed from Saul, writing a letter to the Corinthians. Uh, for the, the, the Gentiles in Corinth. Verse 2, and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. The rock that followed the children of Israel out of Egypt, the pillar in the cloud by day, the fire at night, was Jesus, was Christ. So says the book of Corinthians, verse four, that rock was Christ. Verse five, but with many of them, God was not well pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness. This Christ killed those people that were disobedient over in the wilderness. Now, these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. This is an example for you. Go back and read it. Don't do what they did because God will cut you off too. Verse 7, need to be idolaters as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and 20,000. Neither let us tempt Christ. Neither let us tempt who? Tempt Christ. And some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. So who's this Christ that was killing people back in the Old Testament? That's the God of the Old Testament. It's Jesus Christ. Verse 10. Neither murmured ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened to them for in samples, which is an example. And they are written for our admonition. Pay attention to what Take, a, take this example to heart. Upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. So don't just go willy-nilly doing it your own kind of way. You got to be obedient to what, the God, what God says to do. Follow his instructions. Not make up your own instructions, thinking that's going to get you to the kingdom. Let's read another one. Um, All right, we read um, 1 Corinthians. Let's go to John. We'll read John chapter 1, and this will be it. John chapter 1, verse 1. We're going to be run through 1 through 4, then we're going to do some skipping. If you want to see all the rest of these, you can go to the uh, the, the post I put in there. This all in there. And uh, yeah, you can take a... You know, take a note of, uh, go back and read them all yourself if you want to. But this will be last. John, the Gospel of John, the whole the Bible's Gospel anyway. John chapter 1, verse 1. <clears throat> In the beginning was the Word, that's one, the Word. And the Word was with God, that's two. So there's Word and there's God. And the Word was God. So this number one is God and this number two is God. So the Word is God and God is God. That's two gods, right? The God is, the one God is, the Father and the Son. When Jesus was saying that he's the only God, there's no one beside him, he was talking about he's the only God 
that man has ever known. No man has seen the Father or seen the shape at any time. You can read that in John chapter 5, verse 37. You can also read it in John chapter 1, verse 18. Yeah, we're in John chapter 1 now, so we might as well read it. All right, verse 2. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. This word was in the beginning with God. All things were made by the word. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Let's get down to verse 10. Verse 10. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Let's get down to verse 14. Verse 14. And the word, that's the first guy that we saw, was made flesh and dwelt among us. That's Christ. That was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Let's get down to verse 18. Verse 18. No man have seen God at any time. But wait a minute. Like I just said, Nadab and Abihu and Moses and Aaron and seven of the elders, 70 of the elders saw. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he have declared him. So if no man has seen God the Father at any time, who would they want? Who would they see? Who would these elders and Moses and Aaron and Nadab and Abihu see? Like 1 Corinthians says, that rock was Christ. There's plenty more scriptures to read, but I'm going to stop it right here. I hope the lesson was edifying. Um, I hope that you have an understanding now that you have to fear God and be obedient to his commandments to get into the kingdom. You know, you might not receive any punishment now, but the whole world's being punished. There's death all around us, right? I mean, it's going to end by war. So there's going to be this judgment. So keep hold of, keep that in mind and try to be obedient to, this, to what this book says. I don't make up your own thing. Can't do it your way. It's not Burger King. <laughs> all right, that's the lesson. Read your Bible. Uh, keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. Um, uh, until next time, peace and grace to you and yours in Jesus' holy name. Amen.